in this video, I'm gonna walk you through two simple and budget-friendly live streaming setups for small churches. The first system is going to be run with ProPresenter, a very popular presentation software that can do live streaming as well. And then the second system is going to be run on an ATEM Mini Pro. Which system your church decides to use is up to you, and I can unpack some of the pros and cons of each of them in this video. But if you're looking for a budget-friendly system uh, for your church, it's gonna be simple to get up and running and to operate, you've come to the right place. If we haven't met yet, my name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. Be sure to check out all of our resources down below this video, including our free Churchfront toolkit, where I'll be linking a lot of the items that I'll be covering in this video. And you'll also find a link down below if you want to reach out to our team and work with us directly. Before we dive into the setups, I want to talk about the five important ingredients for your church's live stream. The first ingredient is lighting. I'm not going to do a deep dive on church lighting in this video, but fortunately you can find the ultimate guide to church lighting in another video on our channel. It's easy to look up. And in that video, it's going to walk you through the importance of having good front lighting and back lighting at a minimum for your church live stream. Actually, I'll make it even simpler. You really just gotta have good front lights on your subjects on stage because without front light, your camera is just not gonna be able to uh, perform optimally. We'll get back to the video in a moment, but first a word from our sponsor, Church Posting. Did you know you can repurpose sermon videos into social media short form posts without needing to hire a creative team or editing them yourself? Church Posting automates your social media Media, so you can transform those sermon videos into daily viral content and your church can reach more people for the gospel without having to hire more staff or overextending your budget. Here's how it works. Churches simply put their live stream link into the system and then church posting does all of the heavy lifting. They automatically identify the key impactful moments from your sermon. They transform them into engaging clips and they automatically schedule them across all major social platforms. The results, some churches have seen their monthly views skyrocket from 400 to over 50,000 views. Their advanced algorithm takes care of the bulk of the work, but they also have a dedicated team Team of editors to ensure each post is of the highest quality. And yes, for those of you who want a bit more control, there is an option to review every post through their scheduling tool. This gives you as a church leader the freedom to decide exactly what is published to your social channels. With church posting, messages are not just shared on Sundays. They're shared every day teaching people wherever they are. And here's some exciting news for exclusively Churchfront subscribers. Church posting is offering early access to the next 100 signups for only $97 per month. They're currently limiting capacity and this price is a significant discount made possible by our partnership with Church Posting. So if your church is looking to enhance its online presence and community engagement, sign up for Church Posting today at churchposting.com forward slash churchfront. Now let's get back to the video. The next important ingredient for your church's live stream is going to be the camera. I'll talk about this one a little bit later, but you need something to actually capture the live action video of what's happening in the room. Closely associated with your video source is gonna be your audio source. That's the third important ingredient. So you're gonna be pulling audio, usually from your main front of house mixing console in your tech booth at your church. If you wanna keep it simple, you can just pull the main left right mix from your mixing console. And usually your console is gonna have some sort of auxiliary output or it's gonna have USB audio output. Uh, and depending on the system you choose today, uh, you'll, you'll choose which way you want to send audio from the mixing console into your live streaming system. The fourth ingredient is the video switcher. So this is a hardware video switcher. This is the A10 Mini Pro and it does have software running in it as well, but this is just a tangible switcher that I can hold. And this device is essentially a computer that all it does is takes in your video feeds from a camera, from computer, and then you can mix those video feeds together. You can cut to different feeds and it also brings in the audio as well. Um, and it brings in all of those elements and ingredients and then it will then create the, the line cut that you're going to send to your viewers online to see the final 
product. So video switchers can be a hardware switcher like the ATEM Mini Pro, or a video switcher can be software like ProPresenter. So then the final fifth element of your live streaming system is going to be the encoder. The encoder is going to be the other device or application that's going to compress the video and make sure it's going to be delivered online in a reliable way. So with the two systems we're talking about today, the A10 Mini Pro can also be an encoder and it can send your live stream directly online to like your YouTube channel for your church. ProPresenter can also do video encoding as well. It can compress the video down in a way and send it online. It actually has compatibility uh, with some more premium encoding options uh, by a company called Resi. It has direct integration with it. Or for free, you can encode the stream and send it directly to YouTube using the RTMP protocol. That's what I recommend if you're just getting started and you don't have a budget for premium encoding. So those are the five key elements for your live streaming system, no matter the size. So let's dive into the two budget-friendly system recommendations I have. And then again, you'll see how these various elements like switching and encoding uh, are gonna come back up again because ProPresenter and the A10 Mini Pro, they're effectively accomplishing those same tasks, but they just do it in a different way. For both the ProPresenter system and the A10 Mini Pro systems, uh, the common denominator I'm gonna recommend in your setup is going to be this camera. This is the PTZ Optics Move SE camera. It comes in at around $1,200 and it's a 1080p camera, which is gonna be sufficient for your church's live stream. I know a lot of you think you need 4K. You don't necessarily need 4K, especially when people are viewing your stream on mobile devices. What's really gonna make that image quality difference is, is how well your subjects are gonna be lit in the room and, and how well you just operate the exposure settings on this camera. The PTZ Optics cameras have come a long way over the past five, six years since I've been using them. They've really done some great updates to the optics and to the sensor inside the camera. Yes, it is still a PTZ camera with a smaller sensor, which just means you really gotta get your lighting right. Um, you should always get your lighting right, but especially when you have a small sensor like in this guy, just make sure you have sufficient front lighting on your stage. The other reason this camera is so convenient is you can put it on an inexpensive tripod like what I have here, and then it comes with a remote control, so then I can actually Actually control the camera and I can pan it, I can tilt it, I can zoom it in and out, um, I can actually create presets on the remote control so I can have like a wide shot and a tight shot and it's just going to be super convenient, super versatile uh, for a small live streaming system. The other cool thing I like about this camera is it actually has um, both HDMI and SDI outputs, but in this system, uh, when I talk about the A10 Mini Pro, you'll use the HDMI out. But if you wanna have an even simpler setup, you can use the USB-C output uh, to plug it into your computer, like what I'm doing now with ProPresenter, and that's how it actually gets the video to ProPresenter. So it's basically got like a built-in uh, video capture device uh, inside the camera itself. So it shows up as a video source within ProPresenter or any other streaming software you might use. I would recommend ProPresenter. So that's the PTZ Optics Move SE camera. I'm gonna use in both of these setups. Like I said, I think it's a great value for the price and all the features that you get. And you can check out some other videos we have on the channel that talk about dialing in the exposure and color settings on this camera to make it look really great. So here I've got ProPresenter open and you can actually download ProPresenter for free. Uh, even before you buy a license, you can just be using it. It's gonna have a water mark on the output, but you can at least get all this stuff functioning before you pay for the software. ProPresenter is $399 for a license, um, so it's a bit more expensive than if you were to get an A10 Mini Pro, but in my opinion, this is my preference for a budget-friendly, simple live streaming system because I feel like you're just getting a lot more features for uh, your church's live stream if you go the ProPresenter route. A lot of us are used to using ProPresenter for the presentation aspect of a service, like running Lear and background and uh, sermon slides and things like that. But ProPresenter can also do live streaming. So the way it works is if I go to 
the settings in ProPresenter, if I go to inputs, um, you're gonna see here, I already added my Move SE as a device input. Um, it actually came up here as an option. You can select like whatever frame rate uh, you want to use from the camera. Um, and then we've got uh, a label section here, so I can actually just call this the PTZ camera. And now that's gonna be labeled properly. The input was created, so now when I go down here uh, to my media section, I can go to the video inputs tab, and now it's gonna show up as a video source for me to use for um, ProPresenter. And you'll see here, it's actually gonna show up on the video layer here. I'll expand this a bit more, pull this down for you. If I disable video, it's gonna remove it, but then if I cue the video source again, it's going to display it. Um, so then, what you would do in ProPresenter is you would probably go and configure some screens. Let's say you're using this computer for both your worship lyrics and sermon slides, as well as using it for your live stream. I would have two screens. I would call this the um, in-person display, and then I would create another screen, and let's just do a new placeholder screen. We'll call this the live stream screen. So now we can have two different screens that we, and we can send two different types of content. So the in-person display is not going to show the video feed from the camera. It's just going to show lyrics and motion backgrounds or sermon slides. And then the live stream feed is going to pull in the video. And then you can actually format your lyrics to be like lower thirds lyrics over the video. Uh, it can be really powerful. So once those two screens are created, I'll exit that window. And then I'm going to go to um, screens again. I'm going to go to edit looks. And here is where ProPresenter gives you the ability to control what content layer goes to which screens. So for my in-person display, I'm going to disable the video input here. And then for my live stream, I'm going to keep it enabled. And then I'm going to remove the media layer for now. Um, and again, there's so many ways you can configure this. ProPresenter is very powerful. I'm not going to bog you down with those details right now. Um, we have courses on this, or you can sign up for our program and get coaching. We can walk you through this. I just want to show you the capability of what is possible. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll disable the announcements layer as well. So now on my in-person display, you can see I just have the lyric slides. If I had background content, it would show up here as well. And if I go to the live stream, now it's showing the video from the camera and the lyrics on top of the live stream. If I had multiple video sources or cameras down here. If I wanted to plug more cameras into my computer, they would show up down here and I can select between the different camera angles. Once the live stream screen is created and configured with the looks for how you want to send content to that screen, then you can go to the live section up here, go to capture settings, and this is where you can configure the encoding process of ProPresenter to get your live stream online. So you'll see you want to select the source. We want to select our live stream screen that I created and the destination, I would recommend RTMP. And then here you're gonna be able to use the RTMP stream URL and key for like your YouTube channel, other social media platforms. Maybe you're using some sort of multi-streaming service like Restream that can then take the RTMP feed and then send it to multiple social media platforms. This is where you're gonna put that information. You can also select the bit rate and frame rate. I would usually do 1080p 30. And then you can also have a local copy saved and tell it where to save it. And then you can also select the audio source. So once that's all configured, you're going to hit start stream and then you'll be rocking and rolling and your church's live stream is going to be live in ProPresenter. So that is a quick overview of the simple ProPresenter streaming setup. It's definitely my preference because I feel like it's a bit more scalable. I feel like when you want to go down the hardware route with Blackmagic gear, I would prefer going with like the ATEM Constellation 1ME or 2ME switcher. It's just going to give you way more capability in a hardware video switcher. But of course, the price is going to be higher. Now let's talk about using the ATEM Mini Pro for the video switching and encoding process. So with the ATEM Mini Pro, keep in mind, 
you do want to have some sort of screen that's going to function as your multi-view monitor. Uh, what this is doing is this is basically allowing us to see what's going on inside of this video switcher. A multi-view allows you to see your camera angles coming in. Uh, maybe you have like a, a laptop. I've got some sermon slides uh, plugged into this because uh, maybe th this is one reason why the A10 might be a good option for you. Maybe at your church, you're like, you know, what? I don't really want to take the time to learn a tool like ProPresenter. Um, our pastor likes to build his slides in PowerPoint or Google Slides. We really just want something simple that's going to take a video feed from his computer with a presentation on it um, and our camera feed and switch it all together, encode it, and send it online. That's where I do think an A10 Mini Pro uh, can be useful, even though I prefer the ProPresenter solution. So in the multi-view, I see all of my camera inputs. Uh, I can also see the status of the live stream of streaming to like YouTube or other social platforms. Uh, you can also record to like a USB drive that gets plugged into the switcher and then we can see our audio levels here. So then with the switcher I'm able to select between uh, the different camera sources. So right now in the program view this is what your audience will see program preview you can preview what they're gonna see. So right now in program we see the sermon slides and then I'll go back to camera one and now you see the live action camera. And then what's cool about the ATEM Mini, when you configure it with ATEM control software, uh, which is pretty simple to do, you just gotta make sure your ATEM is on the same network as a computer, you download a free application, and you can configure the software. So what I did is I created a picture in picture to be able to overlay our sermon slides over the live action camera. So then you could you know, frame your pastor to be on this side of the, the camera angle, and then their slides could be right next to them right there. So then your online viewers can see sermon slides. You can even put worship slides there. Um, keep in mind with the Aitsa Mini Pro, if you, you could get fancy, you could do lower thirds, lyrics, and things like that. But in my opinion, that's where it really gets clunky. And that's where I'm like, it's so much easier to just use ProPresenter for your presentation software, for lyrics, and then also use it for your live streaming solution as well. Because all of that formatting for having lower thirds lyrics for your online audience, it's just so much simpler when all of that just happens within ProPresenter. But the ATEM Mini Pro, it's still a really solid device, uh, super powerful for its size and the cost. And I think this could be a good fit for some churches. Well, there you have it, guys. Those are my two recommendations for a simple, budget-friendly live streaming system for churches. Hope you found it helpful. I'm gonna link all these resources in the Church Front Toolkit. And if you just wanna talk to someone and get some personalized advice for your ministry, make sure you reach out to us at churchfront.com. We have full-on consulting and integration services, and we'd love to come alongside of you and your ministry. Hit the like button if you found this video helpful share it with your friends and I'll see you next time.